Greetings, everybody. Remember, I'm on World Truth Videos. World Truth Videos. I think it's .org. And, uh, you know, Chaplain Bob Walker, because I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube, but we'll see what happens. All right. Well, this is a continuation of the Jezebel series. I think we're getting ready. Well, it's getting close to being closed out and finished. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We're going to take a look at 1 Kings 19. Now, just a little background here. It had not rained in Samaria, northern Israel, for I think three years. And uh, Elijah had prayed to the Lord to not rain, or the Lord told I, uh, Elijah that it not rain, that it wasn't going to rain as punishment. So Elijah meets King Ahab, the wicked king, husband of Jezebel, and makes a challenge. All the prophets of Baal or the Lord. And they take some wood and a bullock and uh, this as well. Whoever can call down fire from heaven, you know, whichever God brings down fire from heaven, that's, that's God. And uh, prophets of Baal couldn't do it. Elijah did. Elijah had all the people grab the 400 and... 400 or 400 and some odd prophets of all and uh, kill them all. And uh, you can read about that or listen in my uh, Elijah study, one hour and 40 minutes. Matter of fact, I got that on uh, World Truth Video. Um, sent me, somebody sent me a check. You know who you are. Thank you that I used to get a subscription for World Truth Video. I am a, what they call a pro member now. So I'm able to, uh, when you're a free member, you can only load so many videos. Well, now I'm, now I'm a pro, I guess. So, yeah. So, all right, so let's read. What uh, Ahab's now letting Jezebel know what happened to all her prophets of Baal when they couldn't call the fire down. And 1 Kings 19 and verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword, all the false prophets, all the prophets of the devil. And instead of saying, well, the God of Abraham is the God of heaven and earth. And acknowledging that uh, he's able to do things that Baal's not. Well, what does she do? Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, plural, you know, gods... You hear that serpent hiss, right? So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So Jezebel saying, okay, Elijah, uh, I'm going to make your life like the life of all those prophets that you had killed. Verse 3, and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to uh, Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. So he uh, headed for the hills, I guess you could say. And uh, I covered this fairly recently. So about Elijah going to the cave and being fed with the raven. Uh, you know, so 
if you want, you can keep reading it. But this is not about Elijah. This is about Jezebel. We're focusing on Jezebel here. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 21. And we're going to read more about Jezebel. Oh, yeah. Ahab was a bad king, but Jezebel was even worse. I mean, she was really bad. And even when you show them proof that the God of heaven is in control, instead of humbling themselves and acknowledging that and repenting, nope, they want to kill the servants of the Lord. Well, it's going to work for a while, but uh, at least until the, um, well, at the end of the Great Tribulation, there's going to, I guess you could say there's going to be hell to pay. Yeah. All right, 1 Kings chapter 21. All right, 1 Kings 21, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, so here it is, Naboth lives in Jezreel, so they call him a Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of King of Ahab, king of Samaria. Uh, you know, hard by the palace. What is that? Does that mean it was next door or that you could uh, see the vineyard from his palace? You know, it was close by, real close. Verse 2. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it, or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. So, you know, here it is, this guy, you know, this vineyard, this family farm's been, you know, in the family for probably generations. And let me tell you something. Starting a vineyard is not easy. You know, you got to clear the, the land of all the rocks. And then you got to build up the soil and, you know, plant the stuff and then make sure it gets watered. Uh, you know, back in the day, uh, maybe you had to carry water by hand, you know, to get the plants. You know, once the plants get started, you're okay. But when they're uh, first starting out, you got to make sure they get watered. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I mean, I'm not an expert farmer or nothing, but I mean, I've I've grown some plants. And, uh, you know, it's not like back then wasn't like it is today. You know, oh, I'm, I'm going to go outside and turn the faucet on. No. No, you either had to dig a trench or you had to hand carry water. Somebody had to hand carry water. So here it is. This is his family farm, so to speak. And it's been in the probably in the family for generations. It's his, their inheritance. And not just for him, but probably for his kids also. Keep that in mind. So. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. You know, I, I can't I can't give you my family's farm. You know, that's you know, it's it's a family farm. Verse four. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers, and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face, and would eat no bread. So here it is, he's laying in the bed, he's all pouting and miserable. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? 
you know he was so un he was so unhappy that he lost his appetite right and he ahab said unto her jezebel because i spake unto naboth the jezreelite and said unto him give me thy vineyard for money or else if it please thee i will give thee another vineyard for it and he answered i will not give thee my vineyard oh okay and Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Are you the ruler of this land? Arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Oh yeah, he wouldn't sell it to you? I'll get it for you. Don't you worry. So what's he going to do? You know, like, uh, what was it that the... The Godfather movie, you know, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Oh, yeah. Verse 8. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. You know, set him up. You know, let him, uh, make him the center of attention here. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him. Sons of Belial, what does that mean? Now, I'm not 100% sure, but um, I believe it was the name of a false god, but I'm not 100% sure. But Webster's 1828, Noah Webster, Belial, noun, as a noun, unprofitableness, wickedness, as an adjective, worthless, wicked, in a collective sense, wicked men. Ah, that's what that means. Verse 10, 1 Kings 21.10. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him. Ah, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. See, this is why in the Old Testament, the Lord was adamant about false witnesses. Because two or three witnesses could say that somebody did something that was a capital offense, whether it was rape or murder or blaspheme, uh, and they would be put to death. So what would happen to a false witness if he got caught? Well, the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, I think it is, uh, if a false witness was found lying, whatever the penalty was that they tried to put on the other person, applied to them. And all these Jezebel women that uh, divorce their husbands and then go to court and lie their, you know, lie, whatever, you know. Oh, my husband abused me or my children or he sexually molested my kid, you know, my baby. Uh, yeah, he... When he was changing his diapers, he touched his bottom. Well, duh, that's how you, you know, that's how it works. But, uh, you know, I've changed a few diapers in my day. But uh, if there was a penalty involved for bearing the false witness, they were given it. So if you could prove that these people were lying under the Old Testament, under Moses, they would have been put to death. Absolutely put to death. So bearing a false witness was a very, very serious thing. So. All right. So she's getting two devils to lie about Naboth saying, you know, oh, you blaspheme God and the king and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. Verse 11. And the men of, 
his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. I guess they put him up on some kind of table, well, I don't know, table or high chair or whatever. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. No, they did, he did, Naboth didn't uh, smoke some really great weed. Uh-uh. No. Yeah, he got stoned all right, but it wasn't, wasn't weed. He's dead. They killed him. And it came to pass when Jezebel had heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel, Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Boy, this, this woman's really uh, something, huh? Really, uh, you know, <laughs> when you read that little thing about Jezebel in the uh, book of Revelation, the, the false prophetess. Yeah, she uh, takes after her spiritual mother here, you know. They lie. They murder. Bad news. You know, Ahab was bad. But even Ahab wasn't, wasn't going to kill Naboth to take his vineyard. But once the dirty deed was done, let's go see what happens. Verse 16. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm going to go check out my new property. Thank you, uh, Jezebel. I really appreciate that. Boy, that was a good plan you came up with. And it didn't cost me a dime. Didn't cost me a penny or a shekel. Verse 17. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Oh boy, here we go. The Lord came to Elijah, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria, behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed, and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. Ooh. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? See, Ahab was the enemy of Elijah, who was the prophet of God. You know, these people that say, well, you know, God doesn't really have enemies. He just has people that haven't come to Jesus yet. Uh, so when Satan had a war in heaven, what was that all about? I mean, really? You know, when there's a war, generally people die. You know, that's, how, that's what happens in war. You know, they don't go and play checkers or chess or Monopoly. No. And God must have feigned weakness to make Satan think that he had a chance 
to kill the Lord and take his place. Sorry, that job's all that job's already filled. It's not available. Sorry, Charlie. Only the best tuna get to be star kissed. Yeah, if you remember that commercial, you're old. Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity. What is posterity? They're kids, your children. Remember in a previous study, Jehu killed, had 70 sons of Ahab killed. 70. Now, obviously, all those kids weren't Jezebels. I mean, if you were 15 years old, when you started having kids and you had a kid every nine months, uh, you know, it's just not possible. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity and will cut off Ahab, him that pisseth, pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Ooh. Yeah. I remember that Eli's, uh, Elisha, well, I, I don't remember what study it was, but it was a recent study. Jezebel uh, got to feed the dogs. Yeah. The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. And him that dieth in the field, shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. Boy, that's not a very good uh, testimony, is it? I'm not going to be looking for Ahab in the kingdom. And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and laid, lay in sackcloth and went softly. So here it is, Ahab had... A little bit of respect for what Elijah was saying, believing it was going to be true. You know, he rent his clothes, put sackcloth on, and he fasted. You know, he was like, oh, I screwed up. I made a, a, a mistake. Verse 28. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth, humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Now, I just covered this recently with uh, Elisha series. So we're just going to kind of glance over it, but go to 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Elisha, or no, another prophet anointed Jehu to be king over Israel. The Lord is going to get his revenge on Jezebel right here. 2 Kings 9 and verse 30. 
And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't put much stock in uh, the book of Enoch. I mean, there's parts of it looks like, well, I'm talking about the one by Charles, trans, uh, put together by Charles. There's more than one. And the others are absolutely false. But the one by Charles, there's a ring of truth to it. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really consider it scripture and I don't, I don't quote it very often, very, very rarely. And I always put a disclaimer out there, especially when you're talking about Genesis 6, about the, uh, the giants. But I kind of, you know, I've read it once, but according to the book of Enoch, it was the fallen angels that taught the women to use makeup and to cut roots and magic and you know I look at that and I thought you know that's very possible very possible but I don't know but Jezebel heard of it she painted her face and tied her hair tired her hair and looked out at a window and when Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Hath Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. Now, I don't know if you know what a eunuch is, but it's a guy that's had the, uh, the snip snip. Uh, kings would do that so that uh, the the servants couldn't uh, defile their queen, his wife. You know, in case the king wasn't taking care of the, the queen enough, uh, he wanted to make sure the guys couldn't do it, you know. Quite frankly, I think that would have been a really lousy job. But uh, you weren't exactly uh, allowed to volunteer for that kind of job. And by the way, Daniel, the book of Daniel... He, he was uh, in, the guy that was in charge of him was the um, captain of the eunuchs. So Daniel is never recorded as having children in, in the Bible. So it's very possible he was a eunuch. Very, very possible. So two or three eunuchs are looking down. And what does Jehu said? And he said, throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trode her underfoot. Mm. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, Go, see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel. Well, what happens uh, the day after the dogs had her for a meal? Well, they do number two and uh, leave her out in the field. She's a pile of you-know-what out in the field a day after, you know, the next day after the dogs eat her, right? And the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, this is Jezebel. <laughs> Think about it. A pile of dog manure. I could use the S word, but, you know, I'm trying to be children friendly here. You know, a pile of dog, uh, yeah, dog it, yeah. So that's what Jezebel was. She was a pile of dog, you know what.
dog manure. Yeah. Very fitting ending for Jezebel. All right, let's go to the New Testament, uh, Revelation chapter 2, and we're going to close this out. I know I mentioned this at the beginning of the study, but I want to show you how the spiritual mother of Jezebel, how it works. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write. Now we're talking about a church here, right? These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works. Hey, you mentioned their works twice, and the last to be more than the first. So, sounds like Lord's pretty pleased with this place, you know? I mean, works, charity, service, faith, patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, oh boy, here it comes. I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest, or allow, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce, seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Oh boy, it sounds just like... Uh, the Old Testament prophet, uh, prophetess Jezebel, right? Prophets of all. I'm sure she seduced Ahab, right? To commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idol. I'm sure Ahab did anything that Jezebel wanted him to do. Just about. Probably. Oh, you want me to worship your God, Satan? No problem. Ahab would say. Verse 21, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. So evidently, she had, she had a chance for salvation, it looks like, possibly. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And when people say, oh, the Bible doesn't say great tribulation. Wait a minute, what does Revelation 2.22 say? Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Not their unbelief, their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, unto the end, unto the end, not the pre-trib rapture, unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter, Shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father? And I will give him the morning star. You want to know who the morning star is? Revelation 22. Jesus says, I am the morning star. But if you read the complete Jewish Bible, a messianic abomination, or the NIV, uh, 
Revelation 4, I mean, I'm sorry, Isaiah 14 deletes the name Lucifer and inserts Morningstar. So if you read the NIV or the complete Jewish Bible, a messianic abomination, my opinion, they're going to give, and I will give him the Morningstar, Lucifer. Oh, how those Bible printers must really laugh at you. Uh, 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 those of you who don't know any better and use your modern Bibles because they're easier to read. Oh, yeah. Yeah, God forbid, uh, you know, the Morning Star, you know, instead of, uh, that's a lot easier to read than Lucifer, right? And then they'll argue and say, well, you know, Lucifer is a Latin word. It doesn't belong in the Bible. Uh, well, if you call some people that worship that are Luciferians, they know full well who Lucifer is. It's only Bible printers that don't know who Lucifer is. Modern Bible printers. And I will give him the morning star, Christ, not Lucifer. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, everybody, that's it for our Bible study on Jezebel. Ladies, don't be a Jezebel. Because what did Jezebel do? Lies murders worships false gods leads other leads men into wrong things things are going to get bad the uh economies of the west are going to collapse i mean they're just printing money printing money printing money eventually it's going to be like monopoly money it's just going to be like worthless and economies, when they go to paper money, they always collapse. The you know who's, they know full well. They know full well that's what happens. And when it does, they're going to, hey, we got cryptocurrency here. But you got to put it on a chip for whatever. Yeah, I've heard people say, oh, well, you know, this. Uh, the vas va the Vaseline uh, passport, Vaseline passport um, is the mark. Well, until they put it in in the right hand or in the forehead, no, it's not. But it is to condition you to get you ready for that when it really does come, and then you'll be used to taking it. Oh, okay. Well, I want to fly, so I got to have it. Or, uh, you know, I got to go do something, and I can't travel without it, so I won't be able to buy or sell unless I have it. And all the modern Bibles, you know, the ones that take the Morning Star and turn him into Lucifer, or Lucifer into the Morning Star, those Bibles say on the right hand or on the forehead. Ignore that. Now, King James says in. There's a big difference between on and in. I could take poison and put it on my arm. And there's a, a very good chance it wouldn't do anything to me. But if I take that same poison and put it in my body, in my stomach, you die. Snake venom. Put it on your skin. Probably wouldn't do anything to you. Maybe. I don't know. But if it's in your blood, in, you got a problem. You got a big problem. You know, there's a big difference between on and in. And that's why I always you always hear me telling you, stick with the King James. Probably nothing wrong with the Geneva Bible either, but people read notes and then they think, oh, well, that's scripture. No, it's not. It's just, 
It's the opinions of men. And a lot of times they're right, but maybe not always, you know. In the book of James, chapter 1, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the Lord to reveal these things to you. You know, you can't go wrong. That's why I tell people, just get a plain King James, I like large print, with no notes, with no uh, references, just a plain old thing. And every time you read it, you'll find something new. Every time, it seems. So, what can I tell you? All right, I've been jibber-jabbering for 40 minutes. Uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, yeah, World Truth Video. I'm on worldtruthvideos.org, I'm pretty sure. Because I'm on the list for Tube. And they don't like me. And I don't like them. But God loves everybody. God wants to save Jezebel. And he wants to save Satan too. You know, there's actually idiots out there that teach that Satan gets saved eventually. Yeah. They call that the doctrine of ultimate reconciliation. God would never throw people into hell. There is no hell. You know, God just wants to save everybody. So he's going to, you know, give Satan a second chance. Yeah. And they hope you'll never read your Bible and never read in the book of Revelation what it says about the lake of fire. Idiots. No, they're not idiots. They're deceivers. Whether they're doing it willingly or out of ignorance because they read some other deceivers work. That's why you need to read it on your own. You know, don't even listen to me. You know, I could, I'm, I've been wrong in the past. And that's what, uh, that's what wives are for, to always remind you of all the things you've been wrong about. And, uh, yeah. So, they'll always remind you of your mistakes. And boy, I'll tell you what, I've made... A lot. And some really big boo-boos. Really big boo-boos. So, all right, well, World Truth Videos, when the day YouTube knocks me out. Also, uh, Chaplain Bob at Proton, P-R-O-T-O-N, mail.com is my alternative email address, just in case my uh, palmbeachweddings.com, I mean, uh, palmbeachweddings at gmail.com uh, disappears because a lot of times when uh, I've heard people say that they um, when they delete their YouTube channels they get rid of their Gmail accounts too you never know you never know so all right all blessings praise glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son Jesus who is the Christ the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world all blessings praise glory and honor in Jesus name amen